This week's episode of our show has been sponsored by Aurora, Age of Desolation, which is coming soon to Kickstarter. Aurora is a new post-apocalyptic campaign setting for 5th edition that implements new subsystems for survival, exploration, and character creation. To survive the Age of Desolation, great heroes are needed to go out and explore the world of Aurora. And as such, Aurora introduces new mechanical systems for exploration and survival, building on the core mechanics of 5e. If you've been looking for a way to broaden the scope of the exploration mechanics and the survival aspects of D&D and making those more of a theme in your campaign, then Aurora is the perfect setting for you. More than that, you can also make characters with a unique combination of ancestral traits prepared to take on this dangerous new world. So make sure to follow the links below to get all the latest updates on Aurora Age of Desolation. And now, on to this episode. Greetings, my name is Monty Martin. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin. And, and we, we are, are the Dungeon, Dungeon Dudes. Welcome to our channel where we cover everything D&D, including advice for players and guides for Dungeon Masters. We upload new videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so please subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an episode. Today, we are looking at how to play an Artillerist Artificer in D&D 5e. Artificers are a versatile half-caster class that gets to infuse items with magical properties. They get more magic item infusions, and they get some great spellcasting. The Artillerist focuses on creating an Eldritch Cannon and an Arcane Firearm, making them a great blaster while still maintaining the versatility of the Artificer class. The emphasis on blasting is front and center with the Artillerist. Unlike the Artificer subclasses which grant extra attack or features that let you use your intelligence for weight making weapon attacks, no such features are given to you as an Artillerist, so you are going to be relying on your spells to carry the day. Fortunately, the Artillerist brings a really solid expanded spell list with hits like Shield, Fireball, and Wall of Force. We're going to take that spell list, combine that with the broader Artificer spell list, look at the infusions, feats, ability scores, and other features that we might take to build our Artillerist. There's a lot to discuss today, so let's get blasting. Right away, before we get into designing our Artillerist Artificer, there's a few things that we need to take into account. One of the main features of the Artillerist is the Eldritch Cannon. Now, the Eldritch Cannon is a little, almost sidekick that you get. You can either use it as a handheld cannon, I much prefer the option of giving it legs and letting it run around yeah. the battlefield. Uh, but it does take a bonus action to activate your cannon. Your cannon has three different options. It can either blast a cone of flame, it can shoot force ballistas, or it can grant temporary hit points. Monty and myself really love the Force Ballista, so that is the number one way that we're going. But do keep in mind that depending on the strategies you are putting into play, a Flamethrower might be a better option, and playing defensively and healing your party up with temporary hit points can be a really good play in some circumstances. Our Eldritch Cannon does have some hit points, it has terrible saving throws, and a pretty low AC, so it is easy for it to get destroyed if you are careless with it. Fortunately, it's easy to create a brand new one. You just have to spend a spell slot to do so. We get the cannon right away at third level when we take the subclass. And as we gain levels, at ninth level, it's going to do an extra D8 damage with both the flamethrower and the force ballista damage modes for a total of 3D8 damage by that level. We also gain the ability to force it to detonate in a mini fireball if we want to. A good last ditch option as a, as a finisher or as a uh, as an opportunity. I wouldn't necessarily make this my go-to. And then when we reach 15th level, it's a fortified position. It actually grants half cover to those that are near it. In addition, we gain the ability to create two at the same time, and we can fire them both at once. Now, this is a very high level feature, but it's a big damage boost when it does come online. I also want to note that the Force Ballista does push targets back five feet when you hit them. So that is one of the reasons, and we're going to talk a lot about that, that, that it is our favorite, is because you get a little bit of battlefield control by simply pushing enemies around five feet at a time. And once you have the two cannons going and are firing two beams that can hit multiple targets and push them back, it can be a really good play on the battlefield. One important tactical note though with the cannon is that it takes an action to create it or an action to dismiss it. So while you can fire it and control it using your bonus action, if you do want to swap what type of cannon you have out in the midst of battle, 
it's a pretty hefty commitment because first you have to spend your whole turn, your action, dismissing it, and then next turn you have to create it again. So you really do want to create it before the battle starts, have it walking along beside you when possible, and then only change out what type you're using with preparation. So it, it is one of those careful planning sort of situations where you have to think about, okay, is the flamethrower going to be viable in this next combat encounter because I'm fighting a whole horde of kobolds? Well, then go for it. If you know that you're going to need those temporary hit points because you're going to be in a real battle of attrition, then put it down beforehand because the swapping it in the midst of battle is not very efficient action-wise, and it's going to cost you a spell slot. The other important feature that we gain as an artillerist is the arcane firearm. This allows us to take a wand, rod, or staff and turn it into a gun of some sort. Now, what's important to note is you're going to be using your imagination in D&D, wow, uh, <laughs> for a lot of flavor here because... I really like the idea of turning it into a big firearm, but you're still just actually casting spells out of it. So when I pick my spells, I like to imagine what they look like when I'm shooting them out of a gun rather than casting them out of a wand or staff. However, this feature does add an additional 1d8 damage to any artifice or spell that you cast that deals damage. This includes your cantrips. So this immediately makes the reliable option for an artillerist artificer to just dish out cantrips whenever they can as their reliable attack, doing additional damage, more damage than a lot of other spellcasters do with their cantrips. So the playstyle here is pretty evident. We're going to put down our Eldritch Cannon, we're going to have that firing as our bonus action to deal some damage, and then using our action on our turn, we're going to throw some cantrips. Artificers get Firebolt as well as Ray of Frost and a few other damage dealing cantrips, or we'll throw out some of the more damage dealing spells that we get from the artillery spell list, like Scorching Ray or Thunder Wave or uh, Shatter or Fireball or Wall of Fire, what, what have you. So it does build us into a blaster style. The cool thing too is the Arcane Firearm will apply to spells like Fireball. Just note that it's for one damage roll. So you can't do that thing where you upcast Scorching Ray and add a D8 to every single ray. That doesn't work, but you still do get a bit of a beefier fireball out of this. As we build our Artificer, we're going to have to keep all of this in mind. With our bonus action already being accounted for for our cannon, we're probably not going to take too many options that interfere with our bonus action. And when we do look at spells, although there is a lot of utility in the Artificer spell list, and we may want a good spell to concentrate on at all levels of play, but the idea is that we're going to throw one spell down to concentrate on. It could be a damage dealing spell or a battlefield control spell or something that's a utility option. But then we're going to get to blasting. So with that, let's choose our race and our ability scores. I think for the ability scores, it's a pretty clear cut thing. As an artificer, we're using intelligence for spell casting. We get proficiency in constitution saving throws. If we're using point by, I'm putting 15s in both those stats. Yes, 15 in intelligence, 15 in con. I would give us a 14 in dex. This will max out our medium armor, which we're proficient in that, and shield. So we can get a pretty decent AC. And then I would pretty much dump the rest. One <laughs> of them you can give a 10 in. We would go with wisdom and then dump strength and charisma. What races would you choose? I think that... I, although there's a lot to say for picking a human or variant human, we say yes. that in every episode, but I want to go iconic with this. When I think of an artificer, I sometimes think of a warforged, but more often I think of a dwarf. Go with mountain dwarf, use the customizing your lineage option, get a plus two in, plus two con. Sounds pretty beefy to me. I love a dwarf artificer, and I think that really with Tasha's options, you can go with so many different races here. It's not as restrictive. Another option here, if you are using the rules in Tasha's, is when you pick the Mountain Dwarf, you can exchange some of the proficiencies. So since, as an Artificer, we already gain proficiency in medium armor and simple weapons, we can drop those proficiencies and maybe get a few more tool proficiencies, which can be useful for an Artificer. Of course, another iconic option for Artificers, and I think especially for the Artillerist, because we're not really worried about what weapons we're using, we can go with something small and play a gnome, which is totally on brand for the 
uh, tinker, artificer, especially the the one that's going to blow stuff up. I'm going to go the opposite way on that and mention the artificer that I played, which was an artillerist, yes. which was a goblin, a uh, very cheeky goblin who also loved blowing things up. I think the image of that small little tinker who has tons of gadgets and loves explosions is such a wonderful archetype. And if you like playing a character that is intelligent, but also has a little bit of a comic relief element to them, it works really, really well. You're talking about Rocket Raccoon, right? Basically, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, isn't that the archetype here? I think yeah. Rocket Raccoon was my inspiration for my Goblin Artificer, and he would be my inspiration for most Artificers. Yes, indeed. While we're talking about ability score choices here, what's interesting is that as Monty and I built up our Artificer and we're looking at what feats we might pick, there weren't that many options that felt important. Mm. There was one that definitely stood out, but what actually felt more important was getting our int and con as high as possible. If you go with a Mountain Dwarf, it's very easy to max out your int and con by 12th level with this character. Uh, having 20 int and 20 con at level 12 feels really good, and your character is really tough. And what I would note by doing that is that since you're proficient in constitution saving throws, even if you're worried about concentration, by that level, your your concentration bonus is so high that most concentration checks you just automatically pass, even if you roll a 1, unless you've taken over 20 points of damage. So you could save taking Warcaster for pretty late with this character because it's only going to be the really high damage hits that you even have a chance of failing. What I think is interesting with this character is because we currently have a 17 in Int and Con, at level 4, instead of taking a feat, I think that plus 1 to both, to get yeah. both of them up to an 18, because at 18 we are now at a plus 4, uh, is the way to go. So now we're, we're evenly at 18. Perfect. When we reach level 8, that's where I might consider Warcaster. Again, we could wait even later, but I think for our build, let's give them Warcaster at level 8. There are other feats that you could consider for this character, but there's nothing that's super essential. I think Spell Sniper would be a fantastic pick here because it gets you one other damage dealing cantrip, which you do want because our Artificers don't get that many cantrips. They only start with two. And you really want to have those as your bread and butter for attacking. And the extra range on your spells is really nice. The other ele the other feats that you could consider here as well might be Magic Initiate if you really think you need more cantrips. But even then, it's, it's take it or leave it. I might also look at Fey Touched or Shadow Touched. There's some really cool options. You gain some really nice spells out of both of those picks. Using Fey Touched and Shadow Touched, there's some really cool picks for spells, like you could take Hex or you could take Silvery Barbs. Mind, mind you, with Hex, it's a bonus action to get that going, so that does kind of interfere with the Eldritch Cannon. So really, you're only going to want to use Hex if that really appeals to you. Getting an extra bit of damage on a lot of your spell attacks afterwards, but you might actually get more mileage out of just blasting with your cannon. So with that core established for our character, we're going to slap on a shield, some medium armor, pick up our wand, which we're going to make as our arcane firearm, and start infusing all of our gear. This is the real meat of, I think, the Artificer's features. And I think there's some really standout offerings for what we're going to infuse for ourselves, and we're probably going to use them all for ourselves. Sorry, party members. I find that with almost all artificers, I love to use the infusions for myself. I'm a greedy guy, and I want my, yeah. my yeah. character to be as powerful as possible. Right off the bat, we are a spell blaster, so I think the enhanced arcane focus is the number one choice that you want early. Totally essential. It gives you that plus one bonus to hit with your spell attack rolls, as well as a few other little perks there, and it grows to a plus two at 10th level. It's possible that during your journey, you might get a magic item, like a Wand of the War Mage, that does give you a bonus to spell attack rolls, in which case you wouldn't use this infusion, but that, but you can't count on that, so go for it. I think next up, we are an Artificer, and we do want to be a little bit tanky with our AC, and I think that paying attention to that is important, even if we're primarily a distance range spellcaster. So I think looking at either enhanced defense, maybe putting that on either our armor or our shield, or repulsion shield. 
on our shield. We could do yeah. both, really. We, we could. I think that the Repulsion Shield is really good at lower levels of play. Because it's a nice defensive reaction to throw down, and its bonus to your AC is basically the same through most of your character's career. So going that way at low levels and then switching into an enhanced defense when it becomes a plus two bonus, or when you've got the extra infusions, is a really nice way to run it. Now, when we hit sixth level, we get to open up to even more infusion options, and I think the spell Refueling Ring is a must-have for this character. Uh, it might be really tempting to pick up the Mind Sharpener or the Homunculus. Unfortunately, the Homunculus is really hard to use as an artillerist because it also requires a bonus action to command. And the, as we talked about before with Concentration, because your con is so high and you're proficient in con saves already, the Mind Sharpening Stone might not be used that much. So I think just get the extra spell slot out of the Spell Refueling Ring. It's an extra third level spell slot, which is always going to be useful for you. At 10th level, we can start replicating some really prime picks for magic items, especially, in my opinion, the number one choice is the winged boots, because who doesn't want to be soaring through the air blasting their enemies? It's a great defensive perk. You do want to make sure that your AC is high enough to watch out for ranged attackers that might shoot you, but the winged boots are perfect. We can also take the Helm of Awareness to get vantage on initiative, and from here, I would consider just replicating more magic items like cloaks and rings of protection or taking any of the other combinations of infusions that you like to build the character that you want. I think with that core package, you really have everything you need. The Enhanced Arcane Focus is going to increase your reliability mm. in hitting your targets with your spells. You have a good defense, and you have additional spell slots. Plus, maybe you're flying now. So all of this together makes a really compelling artillerist that I think is well-rounded on the battlefield. With all of our infusions selected, the last thing to really think about for our character is what spells we're going to be using as we level up. Although we get a lot of great blast spells as our artillerist spells, things like Fireball and Wall of Force, it's important to remember that an Artificer is still a half-caster. So we don't get Fireball till 9th level, and we don't get Wall of Force until 17th level. This means that the spells that we consider, especially our first and second level spells, are really important because that's going to be the bulk of what we have until we reach ninth level, which is for a lot of campaigns, first to eighth level is like most of the campaign. And then maybe you get to play until level 12 or 13 before the campaign wraps up. Certainly amongst the officially published modules, that's the way most of them work. So those nice juicy fourth and fifth level spells can be pretty aspirational in this case. And that's why I actually like that the artillerist does gain their bonuses to their cantrips. So you want to make sure that you pick a damage dealing cantrip. Don't miss that. You need it in order to be the blaster that you want to be. I think Firebolt or Ray of Frost are the way to go with your cantrips. Um, again, taking a feat to maybe get additional options because you might want Mending or Guidance or another non-combat focused cantrip as well. With my two that I'm going to have at first level, I would personally go with Mending and uh, Firebolt and then pick up Guidance and Ray of Frost as we gain levels. I personally love Ray of Frost on this character, mainly because if I am blasting somebody with Ray of Frost, which slows their movement, and hitting them with my Force Ballista, which pushes them back five feet, I'm really limiting my enemies getting close to us. When we look at our first level spells from the Artillery spell list, I think that a really good spell that you get a lot of mileage from across your character's entire career is going to be Fairy Fire. You're making spell attack rolls that benefit from the advantage, your ballistas are doing that, and your party's going to be doing it as well. So Fairy Fire is one of those great low-level spells that helps you and helps your allies. Perfect pick. I think if we're looking at the blaster and imagining what spells look cool being fired out of a gun, I want Tasha's Caustic Brew. It's a really fun line damage spell that can just feel really at home when we're shooting rays of poison beams through our enemies. Beyond those two, I might grab Absorb Elements and then whatever utility you think you need for first level. If you want to bring some healing spells or other battlefield control spells, any mix of the good Artificer spells are going to work for you for at first level. When we move on to second level spells, we're getting some great options right out the gate from our Artillerist spell list. We get Scorching Ray and Shatter. 
As for pickups besides that, Scorching Ray kind of already fits my needs for being able to blast people. So I think that I want to look at maybe something like Vortex Warp for battlefield control. But I also think we need to look at Heat Metal and Web. These are both spells that we can concentrate on. Mind you, Fairy Fire is still a great play. But if you have a heavily armored enemy, being able to cast uh, Heat Metal on them is a great choice. And Web is also a standout battlefield control spell. Web is also a good reason to have both Ray of Frost and Firebolt because if you trap your enemy in your webs and then you want to start shooting them with your Force Ballista and your own spells, you might want the option of whether or not you want to light those webs on fire. So having both Ray of Frost and Firebolt gives you that option. Ray of Frost is also really useful here because even when an enemy breaks out of the webs, they still have to deal with the difficult terrain that the web area is, and then their speed is reduced by 10 feet, and your Force Ballista can push them 5 feet back in. So the combination of Ray of Frost, the Force Ballista, and web gives you a really nice go-to battlefield control routine that can force an enemy into the webs, keep them trapped there so you can shoot them with advantage and they can attack you, and you have the ways to funnel them back in and keep them there. When we get third level spells, it's actually rather slim pickings for the artillerist. Surprising, because uh, third level spells are so amazing. Right. I and mean, at least we have fireball. That is what you get for being an artillerist. You do get fireball. So old reliable fireball can't go wrong. We get to throw big explosions out of our gun now. Really, other than that, if we're picking some spells... I'm Again, I'm not really looking at Blasting because there aren't a lot of options. I think for Utility, I might take Revivify or Fly. Now we can be the healer if we need to, and we can cast Fly on ourselves or our allies or the whole party if that's the way we want to go to solve some problems. The only limitation with it is that we're, again, we're not getting Fly until ninth level, and next level at 10th, we're going to be able to make our own winged boots yeah so fly might be a useful thing for that one level fortunately our art artificers can swap their spells in and out and i might still bring haste here because i might not cast haste on myself but i might cast it on a party member i love imagining that you're shooting an adrenaline dart into one of your party's yeah. legs and they're just suddenly faster so haste is a great choice there uh, fly could still be useful to cast on other party members, though. You have your winged boots. That's true. That's true. That brings a lot of utility, though, if you're flying, and then you can cast it on someone else and get them up in the air as well. When we reach fourth level spells, we get access to what might be my favorite concentration spell for this character, and that is Summon Construct. Summon Construct conjures a little mechanical golem to fight for you. I like to imagine that I would go the metal route most often. You get to choose what they're made of and there's different effects. I like the metal construct for my, artiller, um, my artillerist artificer. You do have to concentrate on the construct, but it doesn't require a bonus action to control it. So now on the battlefield, we have our little construct running around attacking twice. We have our cantrips that we're dishing out, as well as our force ballistas that we're firing. So this is now adding in a lot of decent damage. This gets really good only two levels later when we get a second Eldritch Cannon. So now we have double the force ballistas as well as our construct and us adding additional damage to our cantrips that we're firing. At that point, you're a compelling damage dealer and blaster on the battlefield, uh, rivaling some of the other blaster options in the game. Another choice that you could make for your 4th level spell slots would be Wall of Fire, which is one of the ones that you get from your expanded spell list. This also is one of those spells that, with the Force Ballista pushing targets 5 feet, you can kind of funnel enemies into the area or adjust things around. One of the nice ways that you could actually use this is use one or two of your Force Ballista to push two different targets that wouldn't necessarily be in range so that you can get them all trapped in the circular version of, of the Wall of Fire. It just gives you that little bit of positional advantage in there. We do not get 5th level spells until 17th level, and when we do, Artificers do have access to two phenomenal 5th level spells, Bigby's Hand and Animate Objects. The downside to both of these, though, is that you have to control the hand and the animated objects using your bonus action. These two amazing spells are incompatible 
with your Eldritch Cannon, and you now have two Eldritch Cannons. So it's a really difficult choice. The two cannons together do more damage than Bigby's Hand does, although Bigby's Hand does offer more battlefield control options, but it becomes a concentration spell, so you can't combine it with other spells. On the flip side, animate objects, if you're animating a whole bunch of tiny objects, against a creature that doesn't have resistance to non-magical damage, the animated objects could do more damage than your Force Ballistas, but by 17th level, immunity or resistance to non-magical weapon damage is super common, whereas resistance to force damage is super rare. So your cannons still might be the better choice that animate objects at this level of play. Thus, I think your best go-to here is going to be Wall of Force. Yeah, in terms of what spells you might pick, it's kind of open-ended. There's not really anything that stood out to us as a must-have other than your Wall of Force. Uh, and I, I do think that there's a more reliable option to use your concentration on something like Wall of Force or one of the earlier spells we mentioned to combine with your Eldritch Cannons and you dishing out your Blaster spells. So I, although I love Bigby's Hand and um, Animate Objects, I just don't think that they excel with this character the way that they might on others. So with all that in mind, just taking a couple snapshots at how much damage we can do with this character as we move through the levels. At 5th level, with just a single Eldritch Cannon out and casting our cantrips with the benefits of Arcane Firearm, you're looking about 2d10 damage from Firebolt, plus another d8 from Arcane Firearm, plus another 2d8 from your Eldritch Cannon. The total of all this damage on average is going to be about 23 damage, depending on what hits. Since you can generate your own advantage from Fairy, Fire, or Web, this can be some pretty reliable damage. Doesn't matter what spell you're concentrating on. You throw something in, like Caustic Brew, or you're concentrating for advantage, you get even more damage out of it. Our 11th level snapshot adds another D10 to Firebolt and another D8 to the cannon. So now we're looking at an average of 35 points of damage per round. Of course, this is accounting for whether or not you're hitting with all of your attacks, but because of some of the infusions we took, we have a pretty reliable chance to hit. And once again, spells like Fairy Fire and Web are going to help ensure that we get advantage on those attack rolls so we can really land that good, reliable, consistent damage. The next big damage milestone kind of comes at 15th level, and that's because that's when we have both Summon Construct and two of the Force Ballistas down. With the Construct and the Force Ballista on the battlefield, you can reliably be looking at an average of 73 damage per turn. Again, that depends on the accuracy of all your attacks. You're going to have a plus 12 bonus to attack rolls with all of these attacks between your Construct, yourself casting your cantrips, and your Force Ballistas. So a, a good ballpark of 50 to 70 damage per turn, and that's almost at will damage you're just putting your one summon construct spell down the one thing to note about these calculations is we used firebolt because firebolt is the way to go if you just want to focus on being a heavy hitting blaster although we did talk a lot about ray of frost which would lower these numbers a little bit but not that much again um i i would say if you're looking at the artillerist by the numbers it's pretty good it's not necessarily the most amazing damage dealer in the game but you get this combination of all the other utility that the artificer brings for their infusions the flexibility of built-in flight all those defenses and the battlefield control that comes from all the spell casting so there's a lot of flexibility and it's a very different feeling character than other blasters like say a warlock a sorcerer or a wizard I also want to bring in here that there is another ability that we should mention, and that is the 11th level Artificer feature, which is the Spell Storing Item. The Spell Storing Item allows you to take a first or second level spell, store it into an item, and kind of cast it for free. It's a number of times equal to twice your int mod, so for us that's 10 free castings of a first or second level spell. Now. If I want to go full blasting, I might take something like Scorching Ray and pack it in there. That is 10 free castings of Scorching Ray. Not bad for our blaster. Although I might also consider Vortex Warp for a little bit of battlefield control on a stick. Either way, that gives a lot of versatility to the casting options for an Artificer, and I think it's a really important feature that comes online. 
No matter what, it is important that even though we are going with an artillerist who is focusing on blasting, the artificer as a whole is a very versatile class. And so playing into some of your favorite spell choices that are going to benefit the party, get you through tough situations, a little bit of utility, a little bit of healing, a little bit of battlefield control to complement the awesome blasting that you're dishing out really brings this character into its light. You're not going to be the greatest blaster in the game, but you can be a really decent blaster while maintaining all of the great things that you get to do as an artificer. So this has been a look at the Artillerist Artificer in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Tell us about some of the great combinations you've made with this character in the comments below. The videos that we create on our channel are made possible thanks to the incredible generosity of our Patreon supporters. If you enjoy the work that we do here on YouTube, please consider joining our community by following the links in the description below. And don't forget to check out our live play, The Fate of Drakenheim, which airs Tuesday evenings on Twitch. You can find all the previous episodes right up over here. And we've got plenty more guides for D&D 5e right up over here. Please subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an episode. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time in, in the, the dungeon. dungeon.